Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If the fish you seek are only in the skinniest of waters, we'll be taking a look at the Salt Marsh 1656, a flats boat with an overall length of 16 feet, a beam of 6 feet, and max horsepower rating of 60. Standout features on the Salt Marsh 1656. A lightweight hull is mandatory to gain access to the shallowest of flats. When used in combination with fiberglass, modern materials like Kevlar help shed pounds and add durability. A snag-free deck provides safety, easy maintenance, and helps keep your line from hanging up on anything other than a fish when sight casting. A hole that is easy to pull will allow for more control and maneuverability when fishing the flats, which translates to less fatigue and more fish stories at the end of the day. Do you want to get to the fish in a hurry? If so, we'll be looking at the Shearwater 23 LTZ, a bay boat with an overall length of 22 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 2 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Shearwater 23 LTZ. A high-speed hole is a must if you want to be the first to the fishing grounds. Often designed with a pad, these holes have less wetted surface when on plane, creating additional speed and efficiency. With the flexibility to fish both inshore and offshore, having large rod lockers to stow different types of fishing gear makes changing location a breeze. Maintaining electronic components and pumps is crucial. Easy system access means you'll be more apt to check components that are vital to a successful day on the water. If you want to run offshore in search of fish, efficiently and economically, we'll be taking a look at the Glassstream 240cc, a center console with an overall length of 24 feet, a beam of 8 feet 2 inches, and max horsepower rating of 250. Standout features on the Glassstream 240cc. Whether cruising inshore with a family or running offshore, being able to operate efficiently is key. A step hole reduces drag, increasing performance, and allowing for the use of a smaller, more economical outboard. With plenty of room to bring the family, bow seating provides a great place to relax and enjoy the sunshine. Easy console access provides a clear entry into the head, keeping the family comfortable while on the water. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Flora Sports and Best Boat. I'm your host, Dave East. This is my co-host, Captain Rick Riles. The three boats that we have for you today all have one thing in common. They're built to catch fish, but that's pretty much where the similarities stop. Boy, you talk about a rifle shot. That's 16 salt marsh. The redfish are getting so far back that you can't reach them with a flash boat. You can reach them with that salt marsh. That thing will float really skinny. What impressed me about it, it's got the function of a typical John boat but yet it's got the durability of a composite fiberglass boat. And not just fiberglass, it's Kevlar reinforced. And it's built to do one thing very well, get in skinny water. But if you need to broaden your horizons, get across a little more open water, that Shearwater 23, that's a pretty boat. It's a, it's a linered boat, it's gorgeous to look at. I really like the big platforms, forward and aft. What impressed me about that boat was the speed. The company itself has a bass boat heritage. They're used to going fast. They carried that heritage straight into that bay boat line because that is a fast boat in a 23-foot bay boat. Yeah, but how are we going to talk about fast boats without talking about that 24 glass stream? Boy, that thing for an offshore boat can pick it up and lay it down. It is blazingly fast. Well, the same deal. That company's heritage started out in racing boats. And if you look at that boat really quick, it, it sort of looks like a small little ocean racing boat. So they kept their racing heritage. They made it into a center console. So you've got the function of a fishing boat but you've got the speed and really high performance, but that boat was also very, very efficient. Didn't have a lot of horsepower. Didn't need a lot of horsepower. It's not a big bulky 24. Does that make sense? She doesn't have a whole lot of beam. She doesn't weigh a lot. It's a fun, fun boat. And I don't have another word for it. It's sexy to look at too. When we come back, hosts Dave East and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat designed to target fish that roam in just inches of water, the Salt Marsh 1656. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard.
Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Salt Marsh 1656. Representing the 14 to 16 foot class in the flats boat category, the Salt Marsh 1656 has an overall length of 16 feet, a beam of 6 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 60. Designed to pull easily over the shallowest flats, she has a draft of 6 inches, a dead rise of 6 degrees, a dry weight of 280 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 12 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. This is a Saltmore 1656, built by Ancona out of Fort Pierce. And really their model designation, Salt Marsh, it really kind of tells you what the boat is built for. Built for shallow saltwater fishing, but just as many people buy this boat to take it up in the marsh or in the lakes and go duck hunting. It starts with a narrower hole we're talking about. Look at how skinny, look at how light, look at the way she sits in the water. Well, what they've done too is they've built the hull out of Kevlar. And what the Kevlar does, it makes the boat bulletproof. This is a boat that you're gonna be running in shallow water, and if you're up on plane and you're running in shallow water and you happen to run across that rock or that coral head or maybe that stump if you're in fresh water, you need to have something that is puncture resistant, and that's what Kevlar is all about. Well, my neck of the woods, if you're gonna fish shallow, you're gonna be bouncing off oyster bars all right, day long. Right, yeah. I'd love to have one that was bulletproof and you didn't end up scarring it up, or even as you say, puncturing it. As technical pulling skiffs go, if you look, there's really nothing sticking up. It's flush all the way back, it's flat, it doesn't have anything that you don't need on it. I like the fact that the hatches are all flush in the boat. You're just looking at the boat, like it's just a nice, easy to clean, easy to run, easy to operate design. But you know what impressed me so much about up here was the storage. We've been all over technical pulling skiffs where you couldn't find a place for your life jacket. No, much, you're right. Much, yeah. But this one, plenty of, plenty of storage. Another thing they did, a lot of the skiffs we look at, the fuel tank's under the bow, and they do that for weight distribution. The more weight you put forward, the shallower she'll float in the back, especially if you're gonna crawl up on that pulling platform. They put the fuel tank even forward of the storage, so they kept their storage in the wider part of the deck, they put the fuel tank in the skinnier part of the deck. I like it, and the one really neat thing about technical pulling skiffs, you don't need a huge fuel tank. They no. don't <laughs> offer any water resistance, they don't burn a whole lot of fuel. But let me show you some stuff back here in the cockpit that I thought was cool. All right, here's a few things I like about this cockpit, okay? You notice you don't see rod racks around, you don't see rod holders? You don't see these on a technical pulling skiff. You think about it. The place to keep rods is under the gunnels, mm -hmm. and you can do it in this boat. Well, not only that, the cost of even an inexpensive rod nowadays is a lot of money. And the last thing you want to do is have it encroach into the cockpit where when you go to step out, you step on top of that rod, especially a fly rod. A lot of the new fly rods cost more than the first boat I bought, so you have to protect them. Keep them below the gunnel, keep them protected, and you're exactly right. They're too expensive to risk breaking one by stepping on it. Another advantage of this ring deck type construction is the fact that you can use every square inch of this cockpit. On a, a typical innerliner boat, the wall comes straight down and you can only walk up to where the wall ends. On this boat, you actually walk all the way to the outside of the hull. That little bit of extra room that you gain may not sound like much, but when you add it to both sides all the way down, there's a lot more usable cockpit and space. And you're not adding it to a 40 footer. Okay, it's not right. like that. When you add it on a boat this size, think about proportionately how much more room it is. Another reason you've got so much room here, they've opted to go with a side console. They don't have the, the center console. You can stand up and drive it. It's a lot more comfortable to sit, but look how much more room it gives you. You're gonna be on this side of the boat driving anyway. Your buddy's gonna be sitting next to you. You don't have all that room taken up by a center console. Well, it's all about maximizing space, and they've done a really good job on that, especially here under the rear casting deck. A lot of the technical pulling skiffs we've tested over the years, they don't have a bait well. You know, they have a little bit of storage, and you can stuff your bag here. This one not only has a bait well, it has a huge bait well. So if you wanted to fish this in, let's say, a redfish tournament, you can keep a legal redfish alive in that well. Let's look at the pulling platform, too. They went with a really, really wide design, and with, where that's useful is when you're pulling a boat, you're gonna wanna get a wide stance to get more secure in the boat when you're pushing this boat on the flat. Doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to push this boat too. It's super lightweight. This boat was designed to get in skinny water. It's super, super easy to push. And that makes a big difference. We're gonna spend all day on the flats fishing. I'm gonna be shoving you around with that push pole all day. The easier it is to push the boat, the better we can get up onto the flat and the less tired I'm gonna be. I love boats who know who they are. Okay, this boat knows who it is. Do you understand what I mean by that? Absolutely. It's at home in shallow, water getting pulled across a flat looking for a great fish. It's got everything you need to do it. 
and it's puncture proof from what you run into. It's really a top shelf technical pulling skill. When we return, host Dave East and Rick Riles step aboard a boat that will comfortably navigate an inlet and zip across a bay, the Shearwater 23 LTZ. This segment brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. We do it all. Custom fiberglass repair. Upholstery and canvas work. Custom dash panels. Specializing in insurance claims. Suzuki and Yamaha sales and service. We do it all. One stop boat shop. Home of fantastic plastics and the fiberglass shop. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they step aboard the Shearwater 23 LTZ. Representing the 23 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category, the Shearwater 23 LTZ has an overall length of 22 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Built for a comfortable and dry ride both inside and outside of the inlet, she has a draft of 12 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 2,400 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 80 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. We're here on the Shearwater 23 LTZ, and we've been through a lot of bay boats. Some of them gray the line between flats and bay, and some of them between offshore and bay. If you looked up bay boat in the dictionary, you may well see this boat. Well, you call it an LTZ Shearwater, I call it Sheer Beautiful. I like the lines of this boat. It's really, really sleek. The boat looks like it's moving 60 miles an hour sitting on the trailer. It's got a pad hull. And what that means, basically, like a bass boat you know, gets up on the pad, when the boat gets up on the pad, you have less wetted surface. There's less hull being pushed through the water. Less wetted surface, less friction, better performance. You can push this boat with a smaller engine, plus you're gonna burn less fuel to do it. Another feature this hull has, it's got reverse chines. And what that is, the chines are the flat area on the outside edge of the hull as they go toward the transom. You now the hull comes up and you have this little flat edge. Right. Well, you can reverse and actually turn that down. It'll do two things. One, it's gonna give you a little bit more lift, but two, it's gonna to help to throw that spray down and away from the boat. It's gonna keep you drier. I wanna show you these rod boxes and I've got a reason why. By putting dual rod boxes back here and they're both, they go all the way up to the bow. So there's nothing too long. You, I can put my rods and reels over here. You can put your fiberglass brim poles. We'll be set, we won't ever get in an argument. Well, you do have a lot of storage up here, but the first thing that caught my eye when we stepped down in here, this is a bay boat. You're gonna be able to take it offshore, do some light stuff. But I like being in the boat rather than on it. Look how high your gunnels are. It's not just your sense of security. It's real, too. If you're in a two to three foot chop, you don't want them breaking over the side. Well, you're leaning against the front of the console right here. This is removable. So is the cooler. And this is a built-in insulated cooler. You take the uh, thumb screws out. This comes out of the way. This whole front comes off. Not that there's a potty under there, but if you need to get to your electronics, you need to store things that you don't need to get to right away, it's a great use of space. All right, as we step aft, Look at the helm. It's a little bit different. This console design is different than what we've seen before. It's more straight up, but the fact that they took this back wall and brought it in, you've got a comfortable place to put your feet, but it, just the fact that you can get closer to the console, it's going to be more comfortable to drive this, especially if you're standing up. You know what else it is? It's cool looking. Yeah. <laughs> it I is mean, that. You know it what? Is. It's got to be a part of it, right? right? We didn't all marry the girl with the best personality. We want her to look good, too. <laughs> this console certainly looks good. Great color scheme, great layout ergonomically very correct if you're running and you go to throttle up and you need to use your trim switches they're right here they're right where they're the right they next to your throttle right. and where they belong right both your trim and tilt will be right there and i've become a huge fan of these bolster seatings where they can be either a leaning post or a very comfortable seat well the fact that they're split if you want to stand and i want to sit we can do that independently instead of having one of us decide if we're going to both stand or both sit so here again to be comfortable behind the helm, I keep harping on it on every boat that we get on, but this is where you're going to spend all your time. The more comfortable you are here, the better day you're going to have on the water. This is a boat that you may run across 20 miles of open water. Easily. Because it can handle it. So you want to be comfortable during that time. Well, if you're going to fish out of this boat, what you're going to do is move to the aft casting platform. You've got three live wells back here. One can be used as a release well. You've got another live well built into the helm seat and another live well on the port side. Let me tell you something about being back here. Not only do they have three live wells, okay, but they're in the back of the boat where your bait and your fish are riding the easiest, but they Makes designed sense. the boat that way. You understand what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. engineered the 
the center of gravity to where she sits best when these wells are in use. Well, you know what I look for when I get on a boat? I look for the little things. Open the access back here to the bilge. Look at the fit and finish. It's just as nice as the underside of the hatch. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to go that extra step to make it that clean, but they did. That tells me they took that extra step to make the boat really nice. You're exactly right, and I'll steal a line from you. The easier it is to access your systems, the better care you take of them. And that's, that's primary here. You're going to wash down these pumps and everything every day. You know why? Because it's easy to get to. It is. Well, if you're in the market for a bay boat, but you want something sleek, something that's fast, looks like it's going fast, but really will run fast because of the design of the pad on the hull, the Shearwater might be the boat that'll fit the bill. When we come back, hosts Dave East and Rick Riles check out a race-inspired fishing boat built with function and economy in mind, the Glassstream 240cc. This segment brought to you by MyFWC. Life jackets save lives. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they check out the Glass Street 240cc. Representing the 24 to 25 foot class in the center console category, the Glass Stream 24cc has an overall length of 24 feet, a beam of 8 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 250. Built for economy and speed offshore and inshore, she has a draft of 11 inches a dead rise of 14 degrees, a dry weight of 2,650 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 75 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. The Glass Dream 240cc. I know they refer to this boat as a center console, but you know what, it almost has a bay boat feel. So it's a boat that, let's say a guy's on the fence. He doesn't know whether he wants a center console, doesn't know whether he wants a bay boat, but he wants one boat that can do actually both. This boat would absolutely fit the bill. There's no place that a bay boat can go that this boat can't go. And there's no place that a 24 center console can go that this boat can't go. You're right, it's a hybrid in the true sense of the word. It can do a lot of things and it can do a lot of things well. I wanna talk about the performance of this boat, the hull. It's got a step. Trace the company's roots back to their heritage. They build race boats, offshore race boats. These boats have to be dialed in. They have to be super efficient to make long runs on a limited amount of fuel. They've taken that technology. They've applied it to the 24. Super efficient design. Very, very fast boat. The step makes a huge difference in this boat. And the smaller horsepower makes a huge difference at the fuel pump. Their 28 runs at three and a half miles per gallon. Well, it does. Most 24-foot boats that we've tested this year have a much larger engine than that. We've run this boat today. It doesn't need it. That 150 is plenty of power. There again, it's the efficiency of the haul. Allows you to go with smaller horsepower. It's going to cost less to buy. It's going to cost less to maintain. I understand your experience with the ladies might be somewhat limited, but you put that pad up there, every girl in this boat that rides in this boat is going to sit right there and she's going to enjoy that. That's going to be the place where they're going to want to go. This is an important feature, I think, to have on the boat. We're in a 24-foot boat. The console fits the boat, but one thing that you really don't see in a boat this size, the entire front end of the console lifts up. Most boats in this size range, you're lucky to have a little tiny hatch you can barely put your tackle box through. This one has an actual head down there. That's a great feature for a boat of this length. Let's go to the back of the console, because that's just as impressive as the front. Okay, we talked about this being a performance boat. This is the dash of a performance boat. This is something you would normally see on an offshore racing boat. You've got race style gauges, you have a matching steering wheel. On other fish boats, this may look kind of weird. On this boat, it fits to a T. It does, I, I have to admit, I, this is my new favorite color, glass stream blue, we'll call it. It looks good. I, in fact, it makes me look good running it. For all the custom stuff we've seen in this boat so far, one thing they decided to do, which I think was a great idea, they stay with a simple leaner seat. They jazz it up with some good cushions, matches the rest of the color of the boat, but it doesn't take up so much room from your cockpit or from the other area of the boat that you don't need. Plenty comfortable, there's storage below where you can lift the cushion forward. You don't need any more than what they put. It's a good choice. They've got the compass where you can see it, where you can use it, and they've got a dry place right over here. Stick your wallet and your car keys in and close it. 
They thought the face of this console out very well. You know, before we go back, I'm starting to worry about you. If I hear you refer to this as the lounge deck one more time, but you know what? She's got a lot of room in the cockpit for a 24-foot boat. Well, you've got comfortable jump seats back here, and they're fixed. There's nothing to actuate. They don't fold. They don't do anything like that, but they don't have to. They're here. When you need them, you can sit down. When you don't, they really don't take up any extra space. No, they don't, and you've got a very adequate live well for this size boat right here. We kept live baits alive all day long today, and they were plenty frisky. Rod lockers in the side do a nice touch. It's a nice way to carry your rods while you're en route. I tell you what, they packed a lot in 24 feet. Well, I've got my battery switch on this side, and on your side, you've got a valve that'll actuate either fresh or a salt water wash down. There's nothing on this boat that they left out. Swim ladder in the back. Let's start with the performance hull again. You've got a step in the back. You've got a built-in bracket in the back. That's where you get all your performance and your speed for a little bit of fuel. You don't need a lot of horsepower to push it. Wrap all that up in a really cool looking package. This 24 is hot. I've been trying to come up with one word for this boat, and I think I just found it. You ready? All right, lay it on me. Vacation. It's the perfect boat. If I was going to take this boat to the Keys, this would be all you would need. You go spend a week down in the Keys, you could lobster on it, you could fish yellowtail out of it, you could go into the backcountry, you could go into the ocean. Anything you wanted to do, it'd be the perfect boat. You can step on it, and it just screams you're on vacation. I've been on a lot of technical polling skiffs, but that little salt marsh, wow, pulled straight as an arrow and it was so easy to push. And we were in just inches of water, never touch bottom. I mean, we were really, really skinny. If there had been a fish close to us, we'd have seen it. But I've got to get there, which means I've got to cross a little more open water. That sheer water 23 LTZ, it's, it's kind of a flats boat, it's kind of a bay boat. It's really nice if you want to fish in shallow water and you want to cross a lot of water to get there. Now let's go to the glass stream. A look, as good as that boat fishes, that boat fits the bill. You know what? It's got some beautiful lines, it's racy looking, uh, and it's got the performance to back up the looks. So 24 foot is maybe a small package, but you know what? They packed a lot into that lane. If you want more information on the three boats that you've seen today, or any of the boats that we've tested this season of Best Boat, go to our website, floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Fort Pierce City Marina in Fort Pierce, Florida, featuring a full-service, state-of-the-art dock system within walking distance from excellent restaurants and historic downtown Fort Pierce. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.